doctors are finding that placing the sickest COVID-19 patients on their stomachs, which is known as prone positioning, can actually help save their lives. Coronavirus patients often die of acute respiratory distress syndrome. And specialists say lying them on their bellies helps to increase the amount of oxygen that gets to their lungs. The ventilated patients typically stay on their stomachs for about 16 hours a day, but there is a downside to placing them in that position. They require more sedation, which could mean a longer stay in intensive care. All right, let's speak now to Dr. Mohamed Munir, a virologist at Lancaster University and a very uh, familiar and uh, welcome guest to our news hour. Great to have you on the show. Um, why does placing COVID-19 uh, patients on their stomachs um, work so well? Well, thank you very much, Maria, once again, having me on the show. So if we really look on to the course of this infection, uh, we can divide the whole clinical uh, picture of a patient into three categories. The first is no symptom, asymptomatic carriers. The second is the milder version, which require uh, four to five days, like a flu-like uh, sickness. And then the third, which required intensive care, is the time when the virus is deep into the lung. So the functional part of the lung is start to get damaged. And that is the time when person need ventilator or oxygen support to survive. And it appeared to, to, to me, as, as you know, I'm a virologist, I do work more onto the research, but I have spoken to uh, my colleagues, practitioners um, here in the UK. They've been suggesting that if uh, the person is left onto the stomach, it facilitated the airway such that the oxygen exchange could be facilitated so that the oxygen can go in and goes out in more frequent and easy way. But this certainly need to be done in early stages of the um, uh, intensive uh, conditions when, when persons start to feel a bit of uh, shortened breath. So uh, longer duration in the hospital also is facilitating in the, in the, in the position, but that required a little longer station, which would have its own complications. And uh, what other treatments are you hearing from your from your colleagues that are proving to be successful during this pandemic? Oh, well, since the start of this outbreak, the first priority has been therapeutics because we knew the vaccines take longer time. So there are certain um, drugs; those are under trial not only in um, under the supervision of the World Health Organization (FDA) but also at every nation. They are trying different combinations. There appear to be some uh, effect with the uh, remdesivir. Severe, but chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine are uh, probably getting a little more discouraging results because of their side effects. But certainly this is something that is uh, moving in a very fast track and hopefully within next couple of weeks we would have at least one emergency treatment become available. And why have we seen young people dying and, and what is the link to cytokine storm syndrome? I hope I've said that correctly. Yes, it's a cytokine storm. So it, it, what happens normally that whenever we are infected with any pathogens, our immune system kick back and try to remove the infection as early as possible. And that uh, comes through uh, small uh, molecules. Those are released from um, our body, especially in the, in the lung. And those molecules are called cytokines. And they are produce an enormous quantity so that it can uh, clear the infection. But unfortunately, these are sometimes uh, are produced at the quantity that is too much and it starts uh, killing the own cells. So it would be uh, very much damaging for the lungs and that lead to a lot more exacerbation of the clinical sign. For example, if we put into the perspective of influenza virus, so influenza virus itself might not cause um, damage to the body than the cytokine storm does and that is induced by the virus itself. So more the stronger immune system is, harder the cytokine storms come back and that is where the uh, lethality leads to. All right. Dr. Mohamed Munir, always a pleasure to speak to you. Fantastic to get the science behind everything. Appreciate it.